Jeff Rowe from Two Hacks Garage. Well, you know what guys, this video isn't about building anything. It isn't about tearing anything down. We'll cover that in a bunch more other videos. This is kind of a technical video per se. I came across a pretty cool tool. It's sonic testing. What is sonic testing? Pretty simple guys. It's bouncing a sound wave through a piece of material back to measure the thickness. Um, this engine block here, you know what, it's a 327 casting. It was originally a factory bore before I machined it and I took it more than 60 thousandths over. It's going to be a race engine, kind of loose. Um, over there I have a set of cylinder heads that have been redone that retain the stock size ports and all that and I might want to get into those and open them up a little bit for better flow. But before anything gets built with this or before anything gets hogged on with that with a grinder, I kind of want to know the thicknesses of things. This engine here was made in 1967. I've already done the machine work on it. Maybe there's some core shift in it. Maybe I want to check the cylinder wall thickness on that to make sure it's safe to run, build this. You got to remember, this thing is going to see a lot of RPMs. And you know what? Sometimes it's core shift or if you bore something a little bit too much, which this one was done on purpose, um, you want to measure these cylinder walls in here to make sure they're thick enough. Those, like those cylinder heads over there. That's a 461 casting Chevy small block cylinder head from the factory. It's made out of cast iron. But however, on there, you know what? The metal in between everything looks to be very, very thin on that. So what do you do? Do you go to a machine shop like back in the day or somewhere that performed that and have them do it? That could have been quite a bit of money. Or do you do it yourself? In this video, I'm going to show you how you can actually do, do this yourself on a budget to determine, is it safe to run this engine block? How thick are the heads in between the ports to determine how much metal I can take out if I need to? It's pretty simple, a little bit of math involved, a little bit of thinking involved. And you know what guys though, it's super easy, it's super simple. You can actually do it yourself. This tool here, I picked up, Mad Dog Kenny came over, him and I went over the paperwork, went online, found some really good resources, and we figured it out in about, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes. So with that guys, let me show you what I'm working with here and also show you how it works. See you in a few minutes. All right, so first off, I bought this online. Uh, I think it's around $125. It's gonna come in handy for a whole lot of things. Um, it's made by a company called Eric Hill. Um, what it comes with is pretty simple. Um, you got the device here. Uh, this is rechargeable. I'm guessing lithium power, you just plug it into a USB port, you charge it. Comes with a nice case, charging cord, um, and it comes with your probe. So this is the actual probe here that you use, and here's how you connect it in there. Pretty simple, really. Oh, and it comes with it, basic instructions. Um, you do need to really go over this pretty well, and it kind of gives you a basis of what you need to be doing. Not everything in here for all materials is covered. That's why there's really good online tutorials for that, and I'll explain that in a minute. So how does this thing work? Well, it's pretty simple. You plug in your probes like that. You power it on and I'm not going to go through everything on here, but it's got, you know, menu for all kinds of different neat uh, functions, your velocity. So this is where it's important. You got your velocity in here and it's, if you look at those numbers there, that's the speed at which the uh, signal it's sending through the material needs uh, based upon the material you're using to determine how thick it is. Um, if you see here, I say custom one, well, I'm using what's considered gray iron, cast iron. So I had to go online and find that speed number on here and put that in there. Um, I'll actually include a link to a website that's very technical, very scientific -y, nerdy type stuff. But it's a really good tutorial on how does this work, how do you set these up, and all that type of stuff. Like I said, the instruction manual right here is very important. You really do need to go over that. Um, but yeah, <laughs> this is pretty neat. Really simple to use, actually. Once you get it plugged in and once you calibrate it, there's a calibration setting on here, uh, which is neat. That's also covered in there. Tell you what, guys, if you get one of these, it's very simple. But I want to show you how this actually works. So once you get your, your speed set up of the material you're using, because every material has a, a different speed setting, if you want to call it, which is going to show right there, you need to actually go use it. And the neat part about that is, I'm going to show you something it does come with. Um, everybody out there that has kids or knows somebody that has a kid, you know, when you're going into the doctor, when a, your wife or girlfriend, whoever is pregnant, um, they have like an ultrasonic gel. Well, this actually uses that because this is ultrasonic testing. And so you basically have a, a gel here. 
It's the same stuff they use like in a hospital or in a doctor's office. And what this is, it is the material that is going to go in between the actual probe and the material you're going to use. It's just like a little barrier. It's like, think about it this way. Um, if you have a positive and negative terminal on something, you just can't stick them together. Well, everything's got like a ground and all that. You can consider this like almost like the ground between the material you're using and the signal that you're applying to it. So with that, you know what guys, like I said, there's all kinds of neat stuff in here um, to set it up, to calibrate it, all that fun jazz. You can do different um, speed settings and all that. That is all covered in this user's manual. I, you know what? So much to cover in there. I'm not even going to go over it. I'm just going to literally show you how this thing works. And I will put a link out there of where I got this, some tutorials on this, different speed settings for different materials. But this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you how this actually works. All right, guys. Well, this is cylinder number eight and number six on a small block Chevy. Factory bore on this was four inch. Um, I bought pistons that are forged high compression this is gonna be a race engine not a street engine and uh 60 thousandths pistons measured them bored this and i added a few thousandths uh for an additional clearance considering this thing's gonna see quite a bit of heat it's just a race engine and i want to make sure i think it's gonna be uh nice and kosher in there so what i want to do is i know there's a little core shift in this block what i want to do and i should have done this probably before i machined it but oh well what I want to do is I want to measure the thicknesses of this bore to make sure everything's in spec. I'm, I've already measured these, but to be honest with you guys, if you're going to use this, you want to measure like up here, middle, down. You know, I measure 12 points per cylinder on that. But that's neither here nor there. What I'm going to do is just show you how this tool actually works. So what you're going to do is you need to make sure your speed setting um, on this is set to the type of material you're working. And that's where you might need to go online and find the speed sound wave setting, if you wanna call it, that's going to match with the material you're working. So I've already got it set up here. Um, sorry if it's a little blurry. Uh, there's my speed setting for what's considered quote unquote gray iron, which is cast iron, okay? All the materials have a different speed setting. Um, and you need to know that the instruction manual had a whole bunch of those. It's got a bunch of them already pre-built in here, but in some cases you're going to have to custom manually go in there. It's real easy. It's in the menu setting real easy. Like I said, the instruction manuals cover everything very well. So once you have your speed setting set up, what you're going to want to do is there's a gel like the gel I was just talking about. You have your probe sensor here. You can either apply it to the probe or the material you're working with. What I found a lot easier, especially on stuff that's round, is I'm going to go ahead and put it on that probe. Okay, you want to be very careful with that probe. You want to make sure that's clean, and whatever you're testing, you want to make sure that's clean. So you take some of the ultrasonic gel. It does not have a scent. It's not, you know, it's just like a ultrasonic gel they lose use in the doctor's office. So what I'm going to do is just going to apply a liberal amount of that on there. I found through testing, you don't want it you know, too thin, too thick, any of that. So what you're going to do is after you put that on there, you're going to go to the point of where you want to check and you're going to apply it like that. And you're going to hold that there, make sure it's got a good thing. And you're going to go to your gauge or your tool that will tell you the thickness 0.285 of an inch. Okay. Now seeing these cylinders aren't all the same through every engine. I would highly recommend if you do this, write them all down per cylinder, per, per point. Maybe you draw a diagram out of each cylinder and where you checked it. Write those numbers down. You can go into a manual, find out what is in spec and what's not in spec. So yeah, that's actually pretty simple, guys. All you really need to do is set it up, use the gel, apply it. And the reason it's changing right now is because my finger's moving. Um, but that's all you really need to do. Absolutely pretty simple. Not too shabby at all to do. Like I said, if you're going to do cylinders or anything, I like to test almost 12 points in this. And I did write everything down. And then I went online, found out what is too thin and what is too thick. I'm going to show you something here about cylinder heads. Be right back. Just this a quick tip. So when you're checking cylinder heads, you got to remember that there is water jackets built into these to help cool. While this might look thick here, 
It's generally speaking, in some cases, it's not. It radius is back there. You just can't take a grinder, get in there, and start really meeting that out because there is a gap, most likely, in between there. It depends on the cylinder head for water throughout this whole entire thing. So this tool is really good to use for here, here, anywhere in here to help determine the thickness. So when you go to port these or clean them up for port matching or gasket matching, this is that tool is going to help you allow to determine how thick these ports actually are. That's very good considering I did spend some pretty good money on these cylinder heads. And when I go to open these up a little bit, I don't want to ruin them. I know you can fix them and all that, but at the same time, a tool like this does help. Now, you look on the other side of this, you know, <laughs> same thing. You've got here and here, that's obviously, you know, you can start opening up there. But when you start getting in into here and into here, and through here you can't tell how thick that is yeah you can use an inside mic and stuff like that but using a sonic tool on the right setting once you know how to test it and calibrate it and you start going in here point by point you'll kind of get a better idea of how much material is truly in here and how much you can take out like i said this tool works with aluminum copper brass and all that type of stuff but i tell you what guys i'm pretty excited because I've always, always wanted one of these, and I've been playing around with it. And I can tell you right now, it's really going to help me determine how much I can take out, if my engine blocks, when I go forward machining them, if their you know, core shift affected them too much, or how much I have in there to determine, make sure, hey, yeah, this is a good engine block. I can buzz it up safely, and I have a whole lot of fun. I know this video wasn't building anything, it wasn't machining anything, it wasn't racing, kind of that technical, nerdy type, scientific -y stuff. But I just wanted to make a quick video on showing you guys, hey, you know what, when you're dealing with machine work or you're dealing with porting, or you're dealing with any of that, thickness on these things really does matter. And I know in some cases I've came across some blocks, it's like, man, is it sketchy? Is it too thin? Or when you get in there and you start porting, it's like, man, am I going to hit a water jack? Am I going to put a hole in this? I mean, I tell you what, guys, the days of taking stuff to a machine shop that can do this probably at a higher expense, you know what, you can do it on your own. Like I said, these are all available online, multiple different companies. I'm not affiliated with them. It's just one that I found that seemed to have all the features that I wanted. Uh, but what I would do is I would actually do some research into this. Is it something you could use? And you know what? Go from there. For my application, this is going to come in very handy. I do a lot of machine work. I do a lot of engine building, all that type of fun jazz. I'm sure with a dragster like this or other things going on with vehicles, thickness of metals is very important, even on chassis, frame rails you name it, control arms, you name it. There's always something in there you need. Man, is that thick enough? Is it too thin? Well, you know what, guys? Now you can do it on your own. I showed you how simple it was. Kind of plug and play, a little bit of gel. Like I said, I could have gone over the instruction manuals. It's very simple. Took me about 15, 20, maybe 30 minutes with Kenny to figure out. You know what, guys? I showed you how simple it was. So yeah, can you sonic test all your stuff at home? Of course you can. A little bit of money, a little bit of time. You learn something new knowledge is power. You know what, guys? I feel a whole lot better having this moving forward with all the projects we got going on. With that, I hope everybody had a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and we'll see you in the next video.